What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment. And here's my review of Hulu series Only Murders in the Building Season 2. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramashkreen. That's patreon.com slash ramashkreen. Let's rock this. First up, I would like to say thank you to Hulu for granting me the screeners to the first eight episodes of this new season. It goes without saying that even though I will not be spilling spoilers here, this review is mainly for those of you, my fellow only murders in the building fans, who already know what's up. Now, as a big fan of the previous first season, I'm happy to tell you that season 2 is equally funny. I wouldn't go so far as calling it funnier or better, but if you like season 1, you're gonna like season 2 just as much. Although some parts of it have gotten wobbly, which I will explain further on this video, but the writers keep everything that works about this show intact. The new additional characters that come along are basically there to give our trio some pause, as they wonder that maybe there's more to life than just their obsession with solving mysteries. Season 2 asks the question of, does this whole podcast and murder case bring them a sense of purpose, or a constant misery, or it's all just a pointless thud at the end. Because when faced with a new love interest, or an estranged family member, or the possibility that the family you have might not be yours, what is truly important for these three protagonists ultimately? The jokes are still hilarious, Steve Martin is still sweet and gullible, Martin Short is still quick on his feet, and Selena Gomez has perfected the art of sarcasm. But season 2 is also a bit of a thinker, and it's surprisingly deep. Co-created and written by Steve Martin and John Hoffman, in Only Murders in the Building season 2, following the shocking death of Arconia board president Bunny Folger, Charles Oliver and Mabel race to unmask her killer. However, unfortunate complications ensue and the trio is publicly implicated in Bunny's homicide. They are now the subjects of a competing podcast and they have to deal with a bunch of New York neighbors who all think they committed the murder. Starring Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez, and Cara Delevingne. One criticism that I can think of about season 2 is that the new celebrity guest stars don't seem to have an integral role in the overarching arc, at least not on the episodes I've seen. Whereas in the previous season, Sting was a somewhat unlikely mistaken suspect in the trio's many many possible theories. But the big names in season 2 just come and go. With the exception of Cara Delevingne of course, who plays Mabel's romantic prospect, the way that Cara's character was written doesn't give enough room for Cara to make a dent with her performance. But as I implied earlier, she brings out a side of Mabel that's more caring and sympathetic. By the way, Selena Gomez continues to impress me. Her monotone voice has an ump to it. Mabel also serves as the referee whenever Charles and Oliver go too far down the memory lane. Speaking of memory, season 2 plays a lot with flashbacks, more so than season 1. It is as though the Writers have buried some of the clues in the character's past, and sometimes those things unlock a painful truth that our trio has to confront. And what I do love about it is that Arconia has become an even more significant supporting character. The building carries new exciting secrets that range from creepy cool to revelatory, and it's even more brazen now than its own chatty residence. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, as much as I love the show's theme music, it can get a bit jarring from time to time. The way they keep hammering the tune every waking minute can irritate you after a while. Now, the second half of season 2 puts a spotlight on Tina Fey's underappreciated assistant, the deaf guy, and one of the trio's fan club members. It's basically this show's way of saying, hey, take a step back, don't get caught in your own tunnel vision. If you allow help 
or input to come from unexpected places, who knows where that might lead you. And once again, the writers did an impeccable job of throwing us off the scent. Probably not until episode 7 or 8 do you finally get an idea of who the perpetrator might be. But even then, another curveball might come in that forces you to return to the drawing board. Overall, season 2 is intriguing, it's hysterical, it's tricky, and I can't stop singing praises for this show. So drop whatever it is that you're doing right now, and go tell your friends and their grandmas to come watch only murders in the building.